the, the next part of, uh, of, of this session is basically, you know, uh, hands-on uh, internet uh, JMeter uh, workshop. I'll, te I'll tell you what I want to accomplish here. B basically, this is the flow of creating any kind of script, whether it's a simple one or a complicated one. You usually record. When I say usually, I seldom re record. Meaning, you do recording, but then you get the hang of it, and you can build a script very fast without actually recording. But we'll start with that. You do a recording. You get a... People will tell you many, many... Um, there can be many sides to it. You, you can do a recording and get exactly what you need. I, for one, like to record everything. Why? Because there are many Ajax uh, requests out there that I want to catch. So you do a recording of, of everything, and then you clean it up. You do some sort of parameterization if you need, obviously. Usually you would need parameterization. You debug it, you test it, and you, t you run it on a scale. Okay? And, and this is basically the flow. Uh, I, I chose a semi-complicated flow where you log in um, into a website, a Drupal website, actually, and you fill out a form and submit it. So it's basically it's a semi-complicated. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about what I'm about to do, and I'm actually going to do it. Okay, so feel free to ask question uh, halfway through, okay, because the idea is that once you are leaving this place, you are able to do it on your own. Okay, so to start with, to do a recording, the way that BlazeMeter uh, is able to record a process is by setting up as a proxy, and while you, co you are configuring your browser to go through a proxy, you are able to go through the website, through the user process, and JMeter basically records everything in a graphical uh, way. Um, and you are able to use this recording. Do not think that once you record, you can do a record and play. It usually will, not, will never work. Like if I record a scenario and I play it, it's not good. It will not work. OK, great. So this is JMeter. Okay, JMeter, if you want to install it, you simply go to, you do Google JMeter, you go to the JMeter website, you download the version, you unzip it, and you have a Java uh, application, which this is basically it. Okay, this is very simple. Okay, um, just FYI, if this is the console, JMeter, has few components that do not do not say much you know, to anyone that is not familiar with JMeter. But there is config element. Let's add a thread group, and then I'll add more view here. One second. Okay, a thread group is basically a group of threads. Simple. Okay, usually it represents a group of users or a, a certain user profile. Okay, all of the threads under the user, under the thread group, will run whatever script which is in the scope of this thread group. It, it's much more simple that, than I, I describe it. Okay, it's a group of users, but I can have many like these. So I, I have different business processes or different user profile. Each thread group will execute a different set of of uh, um, steps. Okay, so I can have like. Yeah. If I, if I have like, let's do it like this to include the all of the scenarios. I have two thread groups. Okay, one is profile A, the other is profile B, 
The one is 100 users, ramp up 300 seconds, running forever. And I can do the same for, this, for the rest. So basically, these are two different uh, thread groups. They will run in parallel if I instruct JMeter to do so. They are co totally independent. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Number of threads is the, is the maximum number uh, of threads that will be active after the ramp-up period. Meaning if the ramp-up period is 300 seconds, it will take 300 seconds to, for JMeter to ramp up this number of threads. So it will start, as you mentioned, every three, three seconds, additional thread will uh, spawn to life. Uh, and after 300 seconds, you have 100 thread running in parallel and are independent. Okay? Executing a certain script which is under the scope of the thread group. And I'm using the word scope because this, this is something everyone needs to, that is using uh, JMeter, needs to understand what it means. JMeter works with scopes, meaning. Everything is about a scope. If I add uh, a timer, for example, the timer works under that scope. If the scope is the thread group, every request under this thread group, okay, if I added the timer there, I will soon show you uh, stuff. Um, everything under the scope will get affected get affected by this timer. If the timer belongs to the scope of a request, it will affect only that specific request. OK? So j just, you know, we, we can do like, uh, we can talk about JMeter for many hours. Just realize there is a thing named scope. It can affect your work. OK, so there's the thread group, and there's the number of users. There is the ramp up. Okay, and there's the number of loop count or the number of iteration. This is very obvious, I guess. Okay. So, what am I saying here? To record, you need to set up a proxy, okay? Uh, and you need to follow certain rules, okay? You, you, can, you will have this um, slide deck, and you can look at it after. Uh, I'm, I'm going to actually implement wha what you see. I'm going to put each group into a new controller, add recording controller, and all this stuff. Okay, that probably means less to you um, if you don't have experience with JMeter. But let's do it. So to record, you go to a uh, workbench. Okay, you right-click. Everything with JMeter is right-click. You add a non-test element. HTTP proxy server, sorry, um, yep. And once you did that, JMeter is ready to record, okay? But in order to do a smart recording, you need to, to customize um, this proxy server a bit, okay? So for example, um, I like to um, put each group into new controller, why? What is a controller? Okay, you go, you're gonna see soon that once I record something, you see like uh, I don't know tens or hundreds of different lines. Okay, and this can be like uh, confusing. And what you will see is you have the top level request like uh, HTTP blah 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 slash home, but all the CSS, JavaScript, JPEG, PNGs below that. Okay, so it can be like in a one flat line if you do nothing, or again, put in a put the, uh, each group in a new controller. It kind of divide um, the request into different controller. Controller is a set of other controllers or sa or samplers actually. Okay, so I do that, and this is a best practice kind of sequence that you can or cannot, or you know, you may or may not choose to use. Um, 
you would add like um, a listener, a default listener, so a default um, timer. Uh, for example, constant timer. I'm going to do a simple operation, and I'm going to explain what I did, what I just did. Okay. Um, what else will I do? First, I'm going to remove the second one here. Because it was just for presentation. Here, I'm going to add a default HTTP with default I think we're ready maybe another thing uh, add listener that's it okay what I did here I added proxy okay uh, once I configure my browser to go through this, po this proxy with port 8080 Okay, and press start. That's it. The browser will go through JMeter. Everything gets recorded. But in order to do, as I mentioned earlier, to do a smart recording, I do some other stuff here, like uh, the group in each controller. I added the constant timer with this template in it, which is basically the way to put variables in, into JMeter, the dollar. Uh, and, and the T and, and the thing that arounds it. Um, this will actually record the scheduling of my, um, I'm now going to the home page. I wait for a minute or two and going to a different page. Okay, I wait for a few seconds and go to yet a different page. So the minute here, the two minutes there, okay, I obviously I can program it later on, but I can also have Jamie to record it like exactly in the same schedule that I actually uh, do it in person. Okay, this is the way to do it. I use the view results in three, in three I think it is, uh, in order to, I will have to do some parameterization here. Okay, especially if I'm, 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 I'm doing a semi-complicated scenario. Okay, I want to catch the flow in order to identify um, the field that I, I want to actually get. Okay? So, and that's it. You don't even have to do that. Okay? I, I just want you to see this one time to remember it. Okay? But you can do enough with only setting up a proxy. That's it. So, for example, now if I, if I um, go to the proxy, do like... Um, uh, just to make sure. Okay, so I have the proxy, I have all, all the things that I mentioned earlier. I need to add the recording controller. I don't have to add it, but again, as a bad, uh, best practice, I do. Okay. Um, and, and now, instead of telling you more about best practices, I'll just go and record it. I put a port 8081. Why? Just because. I press start. That's it. The proxy is running. I go to I go to my browser okay I you can configure um, I have a plugin of a, of a proxy so I say okay options I say go to local host using port 8081. Okay, configure the browser to go through a proxy. That's it. To configure, local. Okay, now I'm going somewhere. Let's go to my test website. Click 
Great. What happened here? See all this? This is a recording. A dump, a dump of the recording of the single page I just did. Okay? It got recorded. Meaning all these elements was part of the request that I just did. Ask questions. What do you tell me if you understand this, if you have any question? Recording all the HTTP requests, correct? Um, are there, any, I, I guess, the most new uh, JavaScript programs, there's WebSockets. Does this also record WebSocket requests? I don't think so. I, actually, I cannot tell you for sure, but uh, as far as I know about JMeter, it's about uh, HTTP. The sampler is HTTP. So it will record, you know, the, the HTTP get, post, put, all this stuff. Every one of you that goes out of here know how to record a JMeter script now? Only I need to do a dump like this. So I have two questions. What is the basically you're expanding that bar? Is it like everything, uh, that's a one page or like a one uh, uh, category of the URLs? How is it going to categorize? That's okay. the first question. Second is, uh, is it uh, now earlier versions, they don't have HTTPS support. I think the new versions, can we record HTTPS website? Good question. First, the, the part about expanding and not expanding is, is what I did earlier is um, when I did, one second, when I, when I told JMeter to put each group into a new controller. So what he did that what, what JMeter um, has identified as a top level request, you just open a group, which is the thing that expands and, and, and put everything under it. So for example, when I, go to, when I press on the home page, you say, okay, this is probably the home page. This is, I don't know, th there was probably Yahoo there, although that I did something else. Let's do it again. Okay, this is more, probably there was something that, uh, from, a, from a previous demonstration. But I, I just went to the home page. So this is like, a sim you see a simple controller, which is uh, just a container, a very simple one. And under it, you see the actual request, okay? And all of the, what uh, JMeter is uh, calling the embedded resources within that request. CSS, JavaScript, whatever. You see Google services. Okay, basically it, it's, it's a dump like uh, as if we were to listen to the network and uh, record all of the requests going out. Okay, and, and um, this, your second request was HTTP versus HTTPS. Traditionally JMeter did not support HTTPS recording. Um, now it support, I would say, it still has limitation. I, w I will explain. explain. You, uh, you had to use Bad Boy, which is a different software, to record and then migrate into JMeter. No more. JMeter support HTTPS recording, but uh, it support all of HTTPS recording. It's out of the box if the certification is uh, a valid one uh, that works with a valid CA. Okay, if it's your own self-signed certification, you will you will still have some issues with it. Okay, but if you're gonna uh, record HTTPS, that again it's valid, no issues with that. Okay. Any other questions? There is a way of like recording that from the mobile smartphone.
Yeah. Yeah. That's maybe when you're in your class. Again, uh, just, just to give you a hint, okay, and I'll be happy to discuss this. Um, go to the network, go to, uh, and there is a place to define a proxy. And you yeah. define a proxy, and that's it. So you obviously need to be on the same network. Uh, but this is a PC for, not, not, sorry, not a PC, but this is the same as running a browser from your own uh, server. Okay? Um, the one thing that will be interesting is that if you look here, here you see that uh, the user agent is obviously the uh, Mozilla. And uh, I'm guessing that uh, whatever uh, smartphone that you will use, you will see a different user agent. Okay? Yes, it is a different agent, uh, user agent. Another question is if it is a browser, it's easy to do the proxy mechanism. But uh, every smartphone vendor, they have a different way of accessing the web services. That doesn't I mean, they don't come from the browser. The request go directly. Yeah. They have a small app. The app is going over web services and communicating with that. So in those cases, I don't think. Uh, I mean, do you have any way we have yeah, recording? You you will have any. Basically, the proxy mechanism. Jamie provides you with the proxy, and, and I agree <laughs> that uh, a browser provides you with the ability to go through the proxy. I'm I'm assuming that some application that do not go through the operating system proxy. Uh, you will need to build these these services your own, okay? But in that type of scenario, you could actually just go ahead and throw together a box that's just a gateway, and then route HTTP requests through this proxy and out through a different gateway. So if you were to go ahead and manually configure your network to use a different system on on the same subnet as your gateway, and then route that through your proxy, you'd still be able to record the session. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a limitation of being able to set the proxy if you have enough infrastructure to be able to push your gateway data through um, this proxy that you've set up. Again, everything is possible, but I'm assuming there, w there can be some challenges. But in, in, in these cases, don't record. You know, build. It's not uh, that hard. Um, so let's see what we, what we covered by this. So, uh, okay, that, that's sufficient about recording. Now you need to clean. Okay, you get a full dump. What I usually do is go over this uh, full list of recording and, and select uh, what I want to, to leave and what I want to leave out. Okay, I, I can do it beforehand. I can tell uh, the recording mechanism not to record JavaScript or images and stuff like that. But again, I like to record everything and then see. And I give you a brief example. OK, let's say this is my recording. OK, a very long list of files. Most of them I don't want to record. For example, I don't want to record, and I'll explain why, all the PNG and JavaScript, whatever. But it's very important to use them in the low test because, you know, if you want to do a, live, a real simulation, uh, part of the load should be JavaScript and, and uh, images and stuff like that. But JMeter has a way, a much more, um, you know, nice way to generate the embedded resources by simply checking the retrieve all embedded resources. Okay, so I rather use this, like check this box, okay, here, and tell him, listen, please, Jamie, to bring me the top level request and also all of its embedded resources. And then I don't need to record them. Okay? So what I do is, assuming that this is the, the practice that I follow, First I record, then I go and see, okay, let's see what we have. CSS, I don't need. Okay, let's uh, um, collapse. Okay, let's see here. 
I don't need CSS, I don't need PNG, no JavaScript, uh, no, 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 still not, no, 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 no. But this I do need. Okay, so I remove all the stuff that I don't need, and I leave the stuff that I do need. Again, I don't need this, 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 but this I do need. Why? Because these are Ajax requests and I want to include them. Okay? So let's say I go through uh, basically my, the entire recording and select what I need and what I don't need and I get like a clean list. Okay? Much shorter list. Okay. What I do is, not only that I remove all the stuff that I don't need, I go and change the labels and provide names that are meaningful for me. For example, what I want to test is, I, 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 don't want, I do want to leave the path. Keep in mind that whatever, JMeter to basic, whatever it records, it provides the same uh, the path as the label name and also I'm going to show it to you so you, you, you can see. Let's see a sampler. This is a sampler which is a product of the recording. You see under the path that you see the path that which is part of the request and you see the name which is the same basically. So the default is the name equals path, but I can change the name. The name is something that I want to appear in the report. It's not something that is meaningful during the actual test. Okay? So I clean, I change the name, the names, and I get, this is my script. This is basically prior to parameterization. This is the script that I, I, I'm going to run. Okay? So I recorded, I cleaned, I change the labels according to what I want. Okay. And the next is parameterization. But let's see that I didn't forget anything. Okay, another thing. Reduce amount of different labels. When I do a load test, I, I still can, I still can get with like, I don't know, 100 different URL names. Okay, here I have like, uh, still the big list. It's about 20, I would say, different labels. After I run the test and I view the report, I will see 20 different labels. It, it can get confusing. And it can be also 200 different labels. Okay? Why? Because we have a, a lot of URLs on the website. Whatever. A lot of... Uh, I do want to test Ajax requests. I, I, I do want to test like uh, JavaScript, whatever. I can get like a lot of labels. So one way is to, to reduce the chaos is providing the same label to various uh, samplers that are less interesting to me. Okay? Like all the JPEGs that I do want to include here, I change the label to the name JPEG. So I get one label with all the J JPEG uh, in it. Now let's get to the interesting stuff. Parameterization. Okay. Usually when I do like uh, a low test with many GET requests, I don't need parameterization. GET is something very simple. But if I do a POST, any sort of POST, whether it's uh, um, a login or posting of a form, usually I will need to parameterize, uh, whether it's for the credential, the login credentials, or for the POST request, I need to transfer parameters from the GET to the POST. Otherwise, uh, the server will not know, um, you know, where the, f the form is coming from and, and where to write the data that is uploaded. Okay? 
So you need to parameterize. Let's take two examples. Let's look at the login. Okay? The login usually is uh, uh, usually include two actions. One is the get of the login page, which is a form, and the second is the post of the data within that form, and the server responds that the, the user was uh, authorized or not authorized. So I have the get, which is go to the server with the path user. Okay? Fine. And then I use a controller wi with the name regular expression extractor. For example, I need to get uh, the token named forum build ID, and I need to get the ID, okay, to use in the following request, which is, which should come here. The actual post of the username and password I must provide with the forum build ID and maybe other uh, tokens as well. So what do I do? And again, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into regular expression language. It's, it's in the internet. It's, there are plenty of examples. But I use this uh, controller okay, to extract this field. It's a post-processor controller, which means it's activated post uh, the request, meaning the request goes out, comes in, and this controller goes into action, meaning it goes over the data, specifically the body of the main sample, okay, and it uses this regular expression template to retrieve this token. Okay? Please let me know. How many people think this is complicated? I, I, sh I expect to see all hands in the air. Good, good. This is simple stuff? How many consider this simple stuff? Okay, there's a lot uh, in the middle. Well, I it's definitely not simple, but it's definitely not complicated. You need to do it once, and, and that's it. It's streamlined. Okay, it's usually you do it. I don't really remember the language of regular expression, but it's always like this here. I mean, it's always name equals quote, the token name, and then you do all, all the other stuff. You, you can go a lot deeper than that. Okay? But usually this is sufficient. Okay, so what I did, I recorded, I cleaned, I labeled. Okay? I'm adding parameters. For example, I can now change, and I will not go into this today, but I, I can take the username and password from a CSV file, okay, that goes like a name, password, name, password, name, password, and use this as part of the login post. Okay? So this is basically the script. I wouldn't say like this is the best. If I were to write this to a customer, I, I'm not sure that I would stop here. I will make it much more pretty and, uh, and the labels would be all meaningful and stuff. And now the rest. So we have a script, okay? Uh, maybe it's working, maybe it's not. I, script is like development, okay? And, and it's, it's, it never works, unless it's a very simple one, it never works, uh, you know, the first time you try it. So you need to debug it. And there are various tools in JMeter uh, 
to actually debug it. I, again, I'm not going into that level, but there are various tools to debug it. You do it on your own PC with a single thread, single iteration, until it's perfect. You don't do like, okay, I, I did part of this, maybe it's okay, maybe it's not, okay, let's do a load test. You know, let's run 200 users because it will not work. And, and the best chance is that some of it will work and, and most of it will not work. So we need to debug it until it's perfect, single user, single iteration. Um, then you try it in a bit larger scale, like 10 user, maybe 10 iterations. Still on your server, not on like, not on the cloud, not on, you know, not BlazeNet and not nothing. Um, on your own server. You debug it, it's perfect, you run it. Bear in mind, keep in mind, that if you run it from your uh, PC, single core, dual core, whatever, it's not realistic test. Usually, uh, uh, where are you? The guy with 100 servers. Oh, okay. It's very easy, again, to think that JMeter is generating the amount of traffic that you need while it's not. Okay? And I gave the example earlier. You can write 10,000 users within this JMeter console. console. This, is not, uh, this is not real. Okay? So don't run it from your PC as a load test. Uh, consider that if you're running it in a local environment, um, it's not realistic. So you need to ra run it basically from, what I'm saying, from a cloud environment. And let's talk a bit about results. Before going into results and results analysis, any questions so far? You use Blaze Meter, sorry. Is Meter providing any API to run in the cloud? Or how is it basically to deploy any wherever the service provider or cloud provider? You always already have the some of these available in the cloud. I mean, they, they come like as one of the app installed on your. Uh... BlazeMeter is basically out of the box environment. Okay. So you can do it your own. You can use BlazeMeter. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Few slides about again. These, these are coming from uh, BlazeMeter, but you can get them also on uh, some on JMeter and some using JMeter plugins. But ba basically, the KPIs with uh, uh, JMeter is first and foremost is the number of threads or virtual users, okay? And then you have response time, you have latency, you have hits per second, you have uh, bandwidth. Uh, you have errors or response code or whatever. Okay, you have all of these and you need to compare them one against the other. This is an example, okay, of a test going from zero to, I don't know, about 8,000 uh, concurrent users in a period of five minutes. This is stress. And you see the response time go up at a certain point. Okay? An example of what you can get with Jamie. Question. Yeah. Uh, I had a question about the recording and the playback of the recording. Um, when you record three pages and it take, you do it one second each, yeah. when you play back that recording, does it do it one second each? Or let's say your server on the second page takes three seconds to respond. Does the one second, is that after the three seconds to respond gets executed? Or what, what's the, I guess, does it go sequentially or does it... Um, wait for the server response before continuing with the rest of the script. It waits for the server response before continuing to the next. So usually when you provide delays within JMeter, uh, the delays are between the, the executions of the request. So if the request takes 10 seconds and delay is 10 seconds and another request is another 10 seconds, it's a 30 second operation. Okay. Okay, some few more KPIs. Um, latency. Okay, latency can tell you a lot. This is an example of la latency. Usually, what is latency? Latency is the time it takes for the first byte to arrive. So, if you can, if you consider a full cycle of a request, meaning data going out and then going back to the client to the browser 
Okay, latency is the time it takes for the first byte to arrive to the client. Usually, not all of the time, usually it will indicate latency is the uh, performance of the server, like the Apache, or whatever. And if you consider the response time, it's the full cycle, the full application, meaning the connection to the server uh, and then generating the data and retrieving the data, which includes also the bandwidth insight. Okay? This is the full response time. So for this is an example. Okay, if you see the latency go up with the response time, it will usually indicate that you have a problem with the server configuration. Okay, that the whatever the IS, the number of workers is not configured right. Okay? If you see it like this, well the latency is okay. It's it's sensitive to load, you see it's going up a bit, but not too much. But the response time goes up, and nothing really changed, meaning it's the same request sequence. This will usually indicate that your server is perfect. But either your database or application or your bandwidth uh, are, are causing an issue, causing the sensitivity to load. Okay, so again, yet another KPI. So uh, how do you measure latency? Um, how does JMeter measure latency uh, apart from response time? Like I submit a request to get the home page. That request is sent to me. So the first byte, it, that's the latency? The time to first byte. Okay. Basically, JMeter is all, all about measures. Okay, And one of its measures, you can see it not only its default uh, Report, but you can see it on the view results in tree and, and, and stuff and listeners like that. Listeners equals report in JMeter. Um, it simply measured okay. when the first byte was um, bandwidth. Obviously, bandwidth is also very important. Can tell you a lot. You use JMeter and load testing in general to find bottlenecks. Okay, and, and bandwidth bottleneck, by the way, is the most common and the most simple one to identify. Um, so again, this is an example where there is a bandwidth bottleneck. Okay, I, I, I can explain you why, but uh, okay, one that has like uh, an experienced eye, see, it should usually should go together. You, in, you increase the load, the bandwidth should increase accordingly if the bandwidth go faster then the actual load, it stops somewhere, you probably have a, a bottleneck. And, and I'm, I'm sure you have a lot of questions about these, but what I'm trying here is, is to show you there are KPI. It's not a, just about let's generate the, lo the load and see the CPU of our servers. That's one thing to go about this, to see how, whether we die or live under load. What I'm saying is doing it right and, and looking at the KPIs can teach you a lot. Okay, and can, can help you find bottlenecks, can help you find the time your system went, you know, the performance went uh, bad. Okay, last slide, and then we'll, we'll open up for, for Q&A. Best practices, again, by me. So this means that you know anyone can suggest his kind of best practices. This is from my experience. Avoid internal bottlenecks. Accept JMeter limitation. This is you, you know the smartest thing that I can think of. JMeter has its limitation. Don't try to stress it. Don't try to get more threads. You know uh, to to have him do more. You know have JMeter like a single engine run 30 thread, but run like 20 engines like this. Okay? Perfect. The number of thread going up with the number of thread depends on the script intensity and complexity. Okay? Various listener take more CPU and more memory. Okay? Various controller as well. Um, so bear in mind you, that you will need, need to tune uh, your test. Usually less than 300 go much less than 300. A test always needs a tune-up, I said, I said that already. Don't expect to script and run on the first try. 
Don't hit your website with everything you've got. Okay, it starts slowly, meaning start very gradually. At some point, do a stress test, but do a very gradual low test. It will teach you a lot. Scale slowly and find bottlenecks and sensitivity points. Remember that the console is a bottleneck. JMeter scalability uh, is challenging, okay? So use with cautious. Um, record, clean, parameterize, and debug. It's hard to debug large-scale tests. Do it locally, okay? So this is my uh, two cents. Uh, so at the beginning of the talk, you mentioned that um, you don't normally write scripts through the GUI, and you do it differently. I, I was wondering if you can show an example of one where you didn't do it through the GUI. Yeah, I, I said I don't usually record, but I always use the GUI. Yeah. So meaning, what I usually do, it's very simple. I'll show it to you. Um... Wait a minute, I want, to, I want also to run a script just to see that it's running. So I'm running a script and then I'll show you. What I usually do is build a test script, add a thread group, and start adding sample, simple. HTTP request, I want to test. I don't know, I'm doing it the wrong way uh, now, but it's the most fastest one. Yahoo.com. And I'm telling it, bring all embedded resources. That's it. I have a script that goes to Yahoo. I want to do some other stuff. But again, because I, I know the outcome of the recording. I did it too many times before. Okay, so usually when I want to do a script, it's like that. And when I do need something like the logging, or the, I record it, I, I do whatever I need here. I go to the uh, uh, workbench, add a proxy, record it, take the specific sample, take it back up, continue building my script. Okay. When you have all the elements of the page, like all the .png files and the cast CSS files and that sort of thing, I, I see that they list them all out when you when you make your first go through. Um, are there times when you would kind of see how much each element of the page takes, so you could actually instrument the page to run a little bit faster? Y yeah, definitely. Um, let, let's see if it's working now. B basically, what JMeter does, it runs each I just ran in the background a 10 user test. Okay, it already got 10 users, I see. Okay, so what you see in front of you, this is each transaction. So I, I can simply see a certain transaction, like Ajax like. They see usually it takes until a certain point, it took like 750 milliseconds, okay? So what you, you usually want to do is basically, okay, this is how it runs now, okay? And l let's say it was bad, it was like 100 seconds or something like that. You would want to identify the problem, fix it, and try again, and see that the, the numbers are lower than, you know, the initial test. So you are able to see each and every component 
also each of every Im embedded resources as well. So for example, wh when you, um, we jam it, this is the capability to tell him, listen, I want you to put in the log all, uh, all of the data measurements or of all of the embedded resources as well. Yeah, yeah. Gemit is a tool. It provides you whatever intelligence you need in order to do whatever decision making you want to do. But sometimes uh, the page load times is uh, dependent on third party calls. Uh, for example, Web Trends, Facebook. Last night we just had a deploy. Um, Facebook had ju through JavaScript errors. So I think for these load tests, it's good to exclude the third-party calls and tune your own website yeah. because you have no control over Facebook. Th this is mandatory what you're saying because yeah. these guys also, they know that you are load testing. So what you will get is, uh, for example, if you include uh, Google or Facebook or whatever, uh, it, 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 Facebook can simply hold the request and not give it back to you because it knows that it's under kind of attack. So usually what you would do, you would, you know, uh, or A, remove all the samples of Facebook, Google, and whatever, or tell Jamie to please test only this domain, okay, and stuff. So, and this is an, another way to do so. Let's see if we missed anything. No, I think this is the last slide. Okay, guys, first I want to thank you all for coming here. Um, again, for me, it's a very exciting experience. Um, you have, um, and this is, the, so far it was, hopefully it was pure J-meter, J-meter, J-meter. Now, two cents about blaze meter. If you want to use J-meter on our cloud, feel free to do so. Uh, you have scratch cards. That gives you, I don't know, between uh, 10 to 30 uh, to 40, sorry, uh, free of charge test to run JMeter. If you need any help with JMeter, again, this was a very, you know, it was like a beginner plus kind of session. If you need assistance, feel free to contact either myself uh, or my team through the website. Uh, we'll be very much happy to, um, to assist. That's it. Thank you all for coming. And take, thank you, Mike, uh, for joining. <laughs>